all right now we are gonna do one more question from the same topic and then you're gonna go forward so the first question the another question that i want you to look at would be there is a plank like this and on that plank you have uh, two forces acting one one is acting this way like that and the other one is acting this way like that this force is 40 newtons and this force is also 40 newtons all right with respect to this we have a distance from here to here as four meters and from this point to this point we have a distance of 12 meters now the angles that are given this is 50 degrees and uh, this is also 50 degrees all right you people now first of all they say find the torque of a couple can you guys please uh, check it out let me know uh, if you can understand by the way do you guys think this is a this is a, a couple yes sir how how is it a couple since it has and it's of opposite direction and acts of the same body and it, and it is parallel so is it five percent or fifty oh, sorry five or degrees or yeah this is a couple because both forces have line of action they're parallel and obviously they have like um acting on the same body opposite direction so this will produce a couple now can you please try and find what would be the uh, torque of a couple here See if you guys can do this. So basically you need that perpendicular force right so first try to find how we can get the perpendicular force so is it 40 sine 50 uh into 12. yes that is correct that is good <clears throat> all right farina shaze zirwa asma the airline. Are you guys getting facing any difficulty here? Sir, can you solve it once? Yes. You see, first of all, if you want to use the distance, you need to find the perpendicular force. So you gotta 
basically draw the component of the force that is perpendicular. So because it's a couple, you just need at least one force. So the perpendicular force would be this one, which is basically 40 sine 50. You agree? On yes. this side, it will also be the same, right? Also take it from this side, like 40 sine 50 distance. You guys should understand that the torque of a couple is one of these forces multiplied by the distance between them because the distance between them is 12. So we can multiply 40 sine 50 and displacement will be 12. What would be then? About 370 Newton meter. Is it clear? Do you understand, Farina? Shahzeb, Zirwa, do you also understand this? Asma? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Caroline, about you? Okay. Now, going back to uh, the whole thing, I just want to basically reiterate to you that when we started doing this, the way in the very beginning, I told you that there are two conditions of equilibrium. Maybe I have, maybe I have. Okay, I'll tell you now. Okay, so basically, what you guys need to remember that there are certain, there are two conditions of equilibrium. Equilibrium means stability. If something is completely stable, we call that that it is in a state of equilibrium. So the first condition of equilibrium is basically uh, that the sum of all forces must be equal to zero. Um, that would be because the resultant force must be zero. There should not be any resultant force. And the other condition of equilibrium was that the sum of all moments must be equal to zero, which means that the resultant moment should be zero as well. So there should not be any turning effect and there should not be any acceleration because we want forces and moments to be balanced at all times. All right. So these are the two conditions of equilibrium you guys need to remember. Now, so let's look at the first question. We're going to look at the applications now. So first of all, let's have a look here. So suppose this is an object. We have a pivot. And on both sides, there's one person on this side. And there's another person on this side. This person has a weight of 800 Newtons. This person has a weight of 1200 Newtons. Obviously, because the weight is being, you know, down, the pivot will have a reaction force because of this on the opposite side. They have given this distance from here to here, which is uh, 12 meters. And from here to here, they've given a distance t. All right. Now, okay. 
Now they want us to find these. So they say find the distance d if the if the system is in equilibrium. All right. Now, so remember, whenever you're going to do this, just write that always first draw the directions. Like, if you look at this force, 800, and this is the pivot, so this force will try to turn this, we'll try to turn this plank in this direction. Do you agree? So this direction is anti-clockwise. So I'm going to say that this force that you see is causing an anti-clockwise moment. Okay, wait a second, wait a second, kids. Okay, so now check this. Uh, first of all, when in the first step, what you're going to do is you're going to write that sum of all moments about the pivot is equal to zero. This is basically the equilibrium condition, right? Sorry, I forgot to make the other. Um, This side. So if I basically look at the other force, this force is trying to uh, turn the pivot this way, right? So it means that this is going to be um, a force that is here, and this is causing it to go clockwise, right? So to do this, we're going to write that clockwise equals to anti clockwise. The clockwise direction has 1200, 1200 newtons force multiplied by the distance from the pivot is D. The anti-clockwise distance is 800 and the perpendicular anti-clockwise force is 800 and the perpendicular distance is 12. So this is the simple you know, uh, question that we have already done um, in our um, uh, uh, IGCSCs as well. Now, to find the distance, we're just going to divide this. So I believe we're going to get 8 meters as the answer. Can you confirm this? Do you have any questions? Let me know. All right. Now, if I want to find this R. OK, sorry. Um, OK, wait a second. Um, yes. Uh, Muhammad Furkan, how are you? Yes, sir. You were having problems with joining? What? OK, Furkan. Um, 
Yes, sir. I'll talk to you at the end as well. For now, you need to remember we're doing basically conditions equilibrium today. So, um, conditions equilibrium are two basic main conditions. First condition is that the sum of all forces must be equal to zero. And uh, if that happens, then it means there should not be any resultant force. The resultant force has to be zero. Do you understand? Do you remember this from IG? Yes. Okay. The next condition that must be fulfilled is the sum of all moments must be zero, which means there should not be any turning effect, net turning effect on the body, right? So right now, for this, we have to make sure that the object is stable. If the object is stable, it must be following these two conditions. Anyway, so basically, we did a very simple example where we have a plank. There are two uh, people sitting, one here, one here. This person has 800 Newton weight. He's sitting at 12 meters. And this person has 1200 uh, Newton weight. And he's sitting at the distance T that we got to find. All right. Now, when these people apply force on the plank, the pivot basically supports the whole weight by applying a opposite direction force as the reaction force. Do you understand? Yes, for yes. Okay. Now we, we're basically doing the same thing. First, I told them to draw the directions. How do we know the directions? Because this force is down and this is the pivot. So this force is basically trying uh, that the plank turns this way. This direction, like this direction, is called anti clockwise, right? All right, Furkan? Yes. So then this anti-clockwise direction, we've drawn this direction, and this force is basically trying that. This plank should turn this way. So this direction is clockwise. So I've written clockwise here. Understood? Now, whenever you're doing these questions, you're going to first apply the uh, moment condition that sum of all the moments about the pivot should be equal to zero, which means anti-clockwise moment should be equal to clockwise moment. So we have a clockwise moment, which is 1200, and the perpendicular distance of these, I've written 1200, and then this is 800, so I've written 812, that is basically the anti-clockwise moment. I've basically equated them and found D like this. Do you understand this? So it yes, should be 1200 uh, below, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, yes, it is, it is 1,200, right. Now, if you want to find R, what you're going to do is you guys need to apply the second condition. Equilibrium, which is the sum of all. Equal to. You're going to do that. Forces must be equal to the downward forces. So this is what you're going to do now. If you see on the diagram, there are two downward forces, which are 800 and 1200. And there's only one force that is upwards, that is R. So I'm going to write that basically upward forces are R, and the downward forces are 800 plus 1200, as you can see as well, which means that R would be equal to 2,000 Newtons. Do you guys get it? All right. Any questions here, please let me know. Okay. Now, the real issue basically starts when you have another system. So I'm going to give you the second example for this. And let's have a look, right? So suppose this time we have a body like this, which has two pivots, one right here, one right here. Okay. Let's call this pivot A. Let's call this pivot B. One person is standing here 
the other person is standing right here. This person has a weight of 1200 newtons. The weight of the plank itself is 800 newtons. And the other person has a weight of 700 newtons like this. Now, all these forces are acting downwards. So obviously, the, their load is being lifted by this force here, which is force of reaction at A. And the other force, the rest of it will be lifted by uh, pivot B, which will have force of reaction B. Is it clear, everyone? All right. Now, in this question, they say find reaction on A, which is FA, and reaction on B, which is FB. So this is basically our question. Now, so there are certain, you know, uh, steps that we need to take before we want to uh, go into this, right? So let's have a look at that. First of all, please write step one is that you always pick your desired pivot. Whatever you like, okay? Whichever pivot you like the most, just pick that. Step two, apply principle of moments about that pivot, the pivot that you picked, okay? And then step three, apply equilibrium of forces. So these are the three steps you're going to take to find this, right? Okay. So Shazeb, Shazeb, are you there? Yes, Shazeb. Shazeb. All right, if I say, all right, let me ask Asma then. Asma, can you please tell me which pivot should I pick? Any pivot you like. Yes, Asma. Uh, eight, no, 800 is not a pivot. 800 is the weight of that. I want to pick a pivot, all right? F okay, so Asma says she wants to pick pivot A. All right, by the way, I'm sorry about that. They've also given some distances, so we need to uh, basically write that as well. I didn't write that, my bad. Wait a second, please. So they have given distances from here, 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 and here. So this is all of it like this okay so this is they say it's two meters two meters two meters two meters like that all right now so according to asma we should pick pivot a all right so it's up to you if you want to pick pivot b that's also fine it will give you the same answers but let's do that so we're going to apply the principle of moments about A. And when you have done this, when you basically pick one pivot, you're going to forget that there are any other pivots. You're going to forget about that, right? Only just focus on that pivot. Now, about A, let's check it out. If you look at this force, about A, this force is trying that the plank should basically dip like this. Do you guys agree? Which means this is a clockwise force. Even this force, which is acting downward, this is also trying to basically turn the pivot this way. This is also clockwise. And even this force, which is acting downward, is trying to cause 
the pivot to turn this way. Everybody understands this? And now, if you look at B, this B, basically this force, which is acting on pivot B, so we've forgotten that there is a pivot like this. So the force is upwards, so it's trying to move the blank upwards. So that is the anti-clockwise force. Do you guys get it? Yes, Imal Abdullah and Furkan. Yes, sir. Sir, someone, uh, I think, asked what type in the chat. How do you do, uh, determine this? Uh, the direction as well. Yes. Yes, yes. Now, I'll tell you about the force FA, why I have completely ignored that. So, Asma, I've just, you know, when I pick one pivot, okay, I forget about this. I don't see this pivot at all. I just ignore this. You have to ignore this pivot, right? And then look at what is the forces doing on it. So, about this pivot, this force is trying to, if this is fixed here, this force is trying to move the plank like this. Do you understand this, Asma? So it means this is turning clockwise like that, right? If you look at this force, if this is fixed here, I've forgotten about B. So it's basically also trying to turn it this way, which is clockwise. And also 700, which is basically trying to move this here as well. So this is also clockwise. So forget about B, think about F. B now. FB is acting upwards, which means that if the this is fixed point, so it's trying to move it this way, which is uh, clockwise. Do you get this point up till now? Okay. So I will tell you why I have ignored FA, the force at A completely. So first, let me write the uh, direction. So clockwise, clockwise, clockwise. And this is uh, my anti-clockwise force. Now, basically, I have Asma ignored FA completely because if you look at FA, it is right on the pivot A. And with respect to this pivot, FA doesn't have a perpendicular force in order to cause moment. So moment is basically force times perpendicular distance. FA with respect to A has zero distance. So moment is also zero. Do you get it? All right. Any questions now? Okay. Furkan, is it clear everything is okay? Yes. Okay. Now, so now we're going to apply the same, you know, IGCSC formula, which is clockwise equals to anti-clockwise. What are clockwise forces? First, we have 1200. So I'm going to use 1200 times the distance of 1200 with respect to A is 2. So I'm going to multiply 2. Then I'm going to add the next moment, which is because of 800. And the distance from 800 to A is 4 meters. Then I'm going to add 700, which is also clockwise, and 700 distance from A is 6 meters. Do you guys understand this? Okay. The next thing is, now we have finished these forces, we have FB, so we're going to write FB. And the force, this FB force has a perpendicular distance till A, as 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is 8 meters. Any questions here? Please let me know. OK. So this means that if you try to calculate this, can you confirm, please, if the answer comes out to be 1225 newtons? Yes. So you have just one variable. You can basically quickly find this. If you have any questions how I've done this, you can ask again. I will explain it again. No worries. OK, now, then I'm going to use 
you were in the second step you're going to apply the uh, equilibrium of forces now equilibrium of forces says that basically the upward forces must be equal to the downward forces now if you look at the diagram the upward forces are two of them we have fa and we got fb the two upward forces and the downward forces are 1200 800 and 700 do you guys agree now with the help of moments we have already found fb so we're going to add fb's value right here and then find fa you're going to add all these subtract that so fa should come out to be 1475 can you please check Any questions now? Shazib, where were you? I called you so many times. Okay. Now, Okay, so should I go uh, forward now, if you guys are okay with this? Okay. Now, so all these two pivot questions, you've got to apply this. The previous questions are very simple. It's not like, it's basically IG things that we have already done. Now, the third and the last type of question that we're going to do from equilibrium of forces would be this one. So let's have a look. So suppose you have been given, there is a wall and on that wall, there is a plank that is attached like this. Like that. Okay. This plank is supported at this point with a rope as well. My bad. Like this. At this point, we can call this B. This point O. This point is A. And that point is C. Now they have shown some unknown, uh, they've shown some forces. One force is acting from here, which is 30 Newtons. The other force is acting here, which is tension T. And there's also one force acting this way, which is reaction R. So this is quite different. Then they have given you this distance, which is 10 meters. This distance from here to here, which is um, six meters. And from A and C, they've also given this distance. This is three and that is three. Ignore my drawing, it's a bit, you know, should be less on that side anyway. So this is given, right? So they say, oh, by the way, they've also given an angle, this, this acts as an angle theta. So they say, find the tension T in the wire and the angle theta. 
Is it clear? The angle theta. Now, please have a look at it. Now, I would like to tell you that there are two unknown forces in this question. First unknown force is basically uh, T and the other forces R. They have not asked for the force R at, uh, in the question. So whenever this happens, what we can do is, this is just a tip for you, so please write it down, that always take the pivot where an unknown and unwanted force is given. Why would we do this? Because when I take pivot here, which is O, so that R has no moment about it because it will not have any perpendicular distance. That way, we can basically simply cancel this force, this effect on our question. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Just like if you remember from the previous part, I when I took A, FA had no effect when we were taking moments because the perpendicular distance was zero. Similarly, I don't want R in this because I need to find T and I need to find angle. So I'm going to take the pivot right here so that the R is uh, basically has no moment about O. Is it clear, everyone? This is a very important point, by the way, if you remember. Okay. Now, once you've established that, we want to find this angle, right? If you notice, this whole thing from here till here is a triangle. You guys agree? And you might also notice that this triangle has a side 10 on this side. And also this side is basically 6 plus 3, that is 9 meters. Right? And this is 90 degrees from here. If I have this side and this side, can I easily find this angle by using um, trigonometry? Yes. So to find the angle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say tan theta is basically equal to opposite over the adjacent, right? You guys know this. We want to find this theta. The opposite side of this angle is 10 and the adjacent side is 9, 9 till this point, right? So then theta is going to be tan of inverse 10 over 9 and I think it should give you about 48 degrees. Can you confirm please? Yes. Sir. Anyone who could not understand this, please let me know. Cool. Now, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking O as my pivot. And about that pivot, I'm going to apply the principal moments. Okay. But for this one, I need to also find the perpendicular forces. So I do have one force as 30, but then T is not perpendicular, it is at an angle of 48 that I just found out. So to find the perpendicular force, I need to basically find the component of this force, which is going to be, because away from the angle, one component is like this, the other is like that. So this is going to be T sine of theta. Do you guys agree? So now check this out. About O, 
if I see this force only, so this force is trying to move the plank downwards. So it means this force will take it clockwise. So I'm going to add here that the direction of this force moment is clockwise. And if I look at this force only, which is the perpendicular force, then this will try to move the plank this way, which is basically anti-clockwise. Understood? So I'm going to put it right here. So it's going to be like this. This is anti-clockwise. Now, just simply, R has no effect because R perpendicular distance from O is just zero. So R doesn't produce any moment at all. So you don't have to worry about that. So clockwise equals to anti-clockwise. Clockwise force is 30. The perpendicular distance of 30 till the pivot is six. And the anti-clockwise force is T sine. The angle was 48 degrees times. The distance was six plus three, nine. Do you guys get it? Sir, so won't we take the weight into account? Weight of what? The weight of the beam. That is 30, right here. Yeah. It's already given, right? So you don't have to do it. So then, if it's not given, and they've given the mass, obviously, you will have to do that. Anyway, now only T is left. So T will be equal to 27 Newtons. You can calculate it yourself as well. Okay. Yes, Farina, Zirwa, Shazib, you guys understand this? Yes, sir. Okay. Asma, about you, Abdullah, Caroline. Okay, Furkan, do you understand everything? Yes. Very good, very good. Now, this <laughs> mark. Yes. So can we take A as the pivot? OK. Now, if I take A as a pivot, then uh, uh, basically there will be a couple of problems there. If I take A as the pivot, it is not going, it is going to uh, ignore T then. This is what we need to find. We can't take that as a pivot. Do you get it? So if they're asking R? Then obviously we will take. A. Yes, OK. Yeah. But then? you need to only take the pivot considering the force that you don't need all right so always think about that in these type of questions all right get it yes sir. thank you okay now i'm sharing an assignment because this chapter is finished um to you people on google classroom wait a second please Moments of equilibrium. It's nice. So on Monday, then we'll discuss this assignment, but uh, tomorrow we will start off with the new topic actually. So by Monday, I think you guys will be able to finish it because I'm giving you more time because I know your schools have started and you might not be able to finish it within today's time. Wait a second. So I think I've done the right moments. Here you go. Sir? Yes. Yes. You get this vectors, worksheets, like both men ne pehle and you never discussed it which worksheet the vectors um, one the, yeah the scalars and this, one. this yeah. one i have not discussed this worksheet yeah you didn't you gave it to us but you'd never discussed it okay i'll i'll give you guys time on saturday let's discuss it then all right yeah anything else i've left up till now no i don't think so all right, so on Saturday, we can discuss it. It's not an issue. All right. Yeah. Anything else, Asma? So is Saturday an extra class? Yeah, I'll take it for the worksheets. All right. 
we can discuss it. So is it the same time? We can do at the same time. It's not an issue. Okay. All right, my people. So except for uh, Furkan, I want everybody, you guys can go actually. That's all right. Yeah. Abdullah, on Sunday, no? I have uh, other classes, so it would be very hard for me to do that. 